If you're a sales or business development rep, you need to drop whatever you're doing and watch this video. These next few minutes in all likelihood could change the trajectory of your life. What should an SDR focus on learning? If you're an SDR, your BDR, what you really need to focus on is your prospecting game. So, I mean, what's your metric? You need to get more meetings for your AEs to close. How do you get more meetings? You need to focus on how you're prospecting on cold calls via the phone, email, and social selling. Those are the three areas, right? So let's talk about phone. How are you opening up your call? Are you being generic? Are you being monotone? So you need to work on your thought-provoking questions that you're gonna be asking your prospect to think about your service in a different light or think about the problem. You need to get them, you need to focus on the problem. You're not selling features and benefits. You're focusing the problem. So when you're on a cold call on the phone, instead of leading in and going straight into like qualification questions, or are you the person, are you in charge of this? Do you make decisions on this? Are you a user of this? It's asking thought provoking questions like, was curious, quick question, was hoping you could help me out, wasn't sure if you could. Had a question regarding expense management, was curious, how are you currently putting in XYZ to ensure that XYZ doesn't happen. You're not going into qualification right, qualification questions right out the gates. You're going into thought-provoking questions that gets your prospect thinking in a different way. And that's going to be data that you use to frame taking a meeting in a good light. So you're going to use that data. Same with emails. How are you writing emails? Are you just dropping them into a robotic sales cadence and wishing that they're going to take a meeting with you? I'll tell you what, I've looked over thousands of emails that are in sales cadences you know, sales enablement technology, and they are so cookie but cookie cutter, cringe, just dry, no, no personalization at all. If you're reaching out to your prospects this, in this way, you, need, you, you got another thing coming. You need to flip that mindset, because I'll tell you, personalization is, is the greatest way to convert a lead. Got it. So what would you say is the importance of communicating with your uh, AE? Yeah, the handoff, right? So you're an SDR, BDR, you got a set, you booked an appointment for your account executive. Now I'll tell you, this is where things can go really wrong, right? So you need to set expectations. They, you were engaging with the prospect first. They know who you are. So say for example, you're on a cold call and you get a yes from the prospect to take a meeting. You need to then set clear expectations. So great, I'm gonna send out this calendar invite. I'm going to be CCing my teammate, my product specialist, Jim, on the email. He's going to be joining us on the, on, the, on the call, and he'll be able to answer any product, any question that you have. So setting those expectations is so key. Because if, say, you book a meeting and then they get an email from somebody else in your company and for the calendar invite, they're like, okay, I thought I was just talking to to Carol, but now I'm getting an email from Bob. It's like, what well, that, that introduces friction. So you as a salesperson needs to minimize the amount of friction. That's your goal, right? Get them on the hook, get their commitment, set expectations. And then on the back end internally with your team, you need to sync up. You need to figure out where that, that set, that appointment is routing to in your team. Cause you need to brief them on everything. Because when they jump on that discovery call, that first appointment call, you want them to hit the ground running. You don't want them to reinvent the wheel. That's how you lose rapport and technically how you lose a deal most times. So it's crucial that everyone's in harmony. Everyone knows what's, what the agenda looks like. They have clear expectations. Your teammate is in the loop that knows everything that you know and you guys are ready to just destroy this first discovery call. Sure. So when would you say an SDR should consider moving into a closing role and why should they move into a closing role? You gotta ask that question to yourself. Do you think you're ready to assume this new role and close the people? Because I'll tell you this, what you guys are doing at SDR, BDR is some of the hardest stuff throughout in the whole sales process. Grabbing your prospect's attention and getting them to take a meeting is one of the hardest things that you could do. So, that's under the caveat being that you know how to properly conduct a discovery meeting, right? So just know what you guys are doing is some of the hardest stuff that's out there. And ask yourself that question yourself is like, am I ready to rock and roll and bring a customer through the, the completion of the sales cycle?
I think you really should. You should, as an SDR, you should be training up, meaning you should be training for that AE role right now. So train upwards. So sit on calls with your account executives, see what they're doing, see what their talk tracks are, what questions they're asking to find that data, those, those pain points, because those are going to be the pain points that you're going to be positioning and selling to. So train upwards, honestly. Train upwards, I, I'd say that's the nugget. Um, just be ready to hit the ground running as an AE while you're an SDR. Sure. So how should an SDR get into a closing role? Let's say that, the, that let's say that an SDR is like, okay, I know that I want to get into a closing role. How should they do that? By internal promotions, by changing companies? Like, what would you what would you say? Yeah, uh, if it's a good organization, then you should talk to sales leadership, and you know, during one on ones, basically map out, have that conversation. It's like, hey, I'm just starting as an SDR. I've been an SDR is like three four months. It's like, hey, let's put together a roadmap of how I'm going to get to that AE position. But your main focus should be crushing it right now as an SDR. Because as you know, you become the go-to person, the go-to SDR in the company. You become a dependable person. And what happens there is managers, leadership, they'll start to like you by default. You're producing. And then if an opportunity comes their way, you're more likely to get that opportunity because you're dependable. They know that you could get that conversion event out of that prospect. So they'll start to feed you. So it's almost like a self-fulfilling type thing. It's like, okay, focus on getting really good at your job, but also have those conversations inter internally with management and leadership. Yeah, I know that you personally, uh, I know that personally you said that your company that you're at didn't have those opportunities to get into a closing role. Then what did you do? <laughs> Great question. So some organizations, are not at, as good at promoting and having upward mobility within the company. And I inquired and they were had bad experiences in the past promoting internally, which whatever, it is what it is. But at that moment, don't, at that moment, it's like, okay, it's time to evaluate other opportunities. Absolutely. Do not think that's a weird idea. If they're promising you this, you're crushing it, you're exceeding met, you know, your metrics, your goals, your quota, and then they're baiting and switching you, they're giving you excuses. It's like, okay, maybe it's time just internally, maybe it's time to start shopping around other opportunities. One of my clients, Travis, was an SDR who wished that he could get 15 book meetings per month. But with my help, he was able to double that and become top performing SDR at his company. But he was able to do this because he knew when he needed help and reached out to me. Remember, as an SDR, part of your job is to learn. There's no shame in asking for help. If you want my help, click the link below for free sales training that will accelerate your learning and get you to the next level. Click the link below and I'll see you inside.